Now let's go ahead and talk about my second tip, which is using code. And actually, Tanae was here last time when we were talking about code. I believe she was on that discussion um, when, when last coaching call went last month. Um, but just kind of reiterate, code will make your supplementing life so much easier if all of your line items adhere to the local code. So whether you're on the roof or the exterior or on the interior, there's codes for everything. Okay, so I brought up a sample one. This is from Aurora, Colorado. I really like this because it's really specific and tells you exactly what Aurora wants you to do. So you've got your three tab, a laminate shingle if we were doing the roof. Um, they tell you exactly how they want you to do this. They want you to use a starter course, okay? So a lot of insurance companies don't like to pay for the starter shingles on the roof. If you're in Aurora, Colorado, I have a code that tells the insurance company this is actually required on our roofs in Aurora, Colorado. Now, I realize across the nation there's so many different codes, so many different requirements. Here in where I'm at in Salt Lake City, every little municipality has their own little codes so you do have to do the legwork and look up these things and go to the building departments and get them but um for example the other day there was uh, someone doing some ceiling interior work it was an older home built in the 30s and the r value of the insulation was way undervalued according to you know today's standards uh, and codes so since they opened up the ceiling and had damaged insulation they actually had to pay to re-insulate the whole uh, attic of that roof due to the code situation. So you wouldn't have known to ask for it if you didn't know what the local code entailed. So it's a lot of work, I understand, it seems, and it seems really boring having to read through these, but if you're going to win at the supplementing game and you can prove that the local code requires it, it's a no-brainer for an adjuster to add it because he's got a good reason uh, to justify adding that line item. Um, so that's that's a Good example, you know, like I said, Aurora, Colorado, I think it's really cool. They get really specific. Um, they actually still use shake shingles in Colorado, which is nuts to me, but uh, pretty interesting. And uh, they have, like, starter course must be doubled for the shake shingles. So these specific codes will help you get light items paid, you know, obviously pretty easy. However, there are some states where you only have one code for the whole state. Florida is kind of like this, and this is North Carolina's code where you kind of have to comb through. Um, however, what's nice about this is this covers the whole state, so I don't have to go to each individual municipality in this instance. Um, so there's different codes for different areas. So I just uh, wanted to show you this North Carolina code is a little bit more intense. You would have to kind of read through here and get what you needed out of it. It is uh, looks just like the 2012 IRC code actually is what it, it really is. Uh, but once I found the piece of code that I need or that is going to substantiate my argument, I would actually reference the, you know, area of the code. So let's say that we needed um, valley um, underlayment. So our, on our valleys of our roof, we need something to protect the valleys, right? That's commonly missed on a lot of insurance estimates, especially for the roof. And so I could, you know, quote wherever it said, talks about in the code, the valley. I would copy that. I'd go right into Xactimate and paste that as a note. So I'd copy that section I was just showing y'all. I'd go into maybe the roofing felt. Maybe we have a low slope um, pitch where you also need double felt on a low slope, right? And you think it's 212 to 412, you just require that you have a low slope uh, double layer felt for that application. I could then come in here to my note template. I actually have one in here, low slope felt, and that references that section of code. So as long as you do two things, first look up the code and see what's required. Secondly, paste it here in your estimate so they don't have to go combing through all of it. They'll love you for it. And then they can just pay it because it's required by code. Um, and I do realize there are policies that don't have code upgrades. You'll run into that in the insurance you know, world. And so then they probably, they, they won't be adding it. But about 80% of policies, somewhere in that range for most of the country have code upgrade in their policy. So that's my tip number two, research the codes. Don't only research them, but implement them into your Xactimate estimate to make it easy for everybody, just for the adjuster to go ahead and pay it.